Well, I believe a dietary supplement should be used as intended by the FDA in the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, the law that created the regulations around dietary supplements. And as the name implies dietary supplement, it should be a supplement to a healthy diet. Diet should be first. I talked about the Mediterranean dietary pattern. It's the most studied dietary pattern in the world. It's been shown repeatedly without any negative studies for 60, 70 years to reduce obesity, cancer risk, death from cancer, all cause mortality, diabetes, on and dementia, osteoporosis, fractures, on and on and on. It is the healthiest dietary pattern in the world. everyone. If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. If you are brand new, welcome to the show. I'm so happy that you have found us. And if you are returning, welcome back. This episode is not going to disappoint. We are diving in to, hold on to your seats, osteoporosis. <laughs> and I know that word is not sexy. That word is like, what? But you guys, you are going to be blown away at what our guest today has to say about this and how important it is to start now, right now, thinking about the health of your bones and fractures and having that in place now and working towards things that's going to ensure that it's stronger later in life. It's a topic that I didn't know much about. And when I got approached to have mom, I was like, yes, please. Because becoming bomb mom or dad, whoever whoever's listening to this episode, or just improving your life so you are incredible, you have to look at every single angle. Yes, even the structure and health of your bones, your nutrition, your sleep. And every single expert that we bring onto this show is just pounding it into your head a little bit more at how important it is to make sure that you are eating right, to make sure that you ask the right questions if you are put on a prescription. Uh Uh-huh, we dive into that. To make sure that you have a game plan with how you're gonna eat every single day, how much sleep you're going to get, like everything. These things aren't just like, oh my God, exercise, sleep better, eat better, you know, and then you'll be fine. No, there's a lot of details that go into that. And the more you hear from our leading experts and the more that you try to grow and become better in all areas of your life, the quicker you're going to hit your goals, the healthier and higher quality of life you're going to live. And yeah, you're going to become bomb. And that's why I have our guest on today is because I just want to keep educating you guys. I want you to keep learning and gaining knowledge from everyone that we have on the show. Today's guest is Dr. John Neustadt, and he has an international reputation as a doctor, researcher, integrative medical expert. He became renowned in this field through his nutritional medicine research, his clinical work, the books he wrote, his work with the FDA on evaluating the use of natural products for potential treatment of rare diseases and developing million dollar businesses, educating physicians on improving patient outcomes and the general public on how to make sure they're getting the care they need and the results they want. He's the founder and president of Nutritional Biochemistry, Inc. Dr. Neustadt earned his naturopathic medicine degree from Baystier University, where he was awarded the Founders Award for Academic and Clinical Excellence. Dr. Neustadt has published more than 100 medical articles written for health and wellness books and is now a number one Amazon best-selling author in the field of osteoporosis. His most recent book is Fracture Proof Your Bones, a comprehensive guide to osteoporosis. Dr. Neustadt was also an editor of the textbook Laboratory Evaluation 
Foundations for Integrative and Functional Medicine, which was used across the country to train and educate physicians on using functional medicine with their patients. I am so blown away by today's episode. I learned so much. And once again, our expert, Dr. Neustadt, doesn't just give his opinion in how he feels about certain topics. He is stating the facts. He is giving us the research and he has an incredible company, NBI. We're going to put it in the show notes because we have a discount code for you guys. Check out his products. He's got amazing supplements. I'm not kidding you. I ended this episode and got five different things. I'm pretty sure I put like five different things in my cart. He is so incredible. When we were done recording, I've recently gotten blood work done and I had a lot of numbers come back pretty low and he is so kind. He stayed on and reviewed some of my numbers with me. I'm like, who does that? And my physician had written me a script for iron and I showed him and told him what I was getting and everything. And he was like, oh no, that is the least absorbable form of iron that you need. And he told me what product he has, how many times to take it a day. And I checked out a couple other things, definitely getting on his vitamin D and wait till you hear about his company. Wait till you hear about his supplement company and all that they do. And I say it in the show, these are the experts that I want to work with. These are the companies with integrity that are producing high quality ingredients and supplements that are going to actually work and be absorbed into your body. These are the people that I trust. So sorry, I got a little salesy on you there <laughs> because the whole point of this podcast was not to like push the supplements, but I'm like, hey man, if you got it and I need it and you know that what I was being told to do was wrong and not gonna be the best for me, please say something. And that's what he did. So I just can't thank him enough. I can't speak highly of him. And we're really hoping to have him back on because we wanna talk more about depression, how to improve your sleep and just more overall about integrative medicine. So we're so lucky to have him on. Enjoy the show, everyone. Check out the show notes. You're going to find your discount code. You're going to find links to his websites so you can order or just check them out. He's got so many available resources to you too on his website. So don't miss that. Don't miss the show notes. And if you are looking to become a bomb mom and you're like, I'm learning all this stuff. I'm listening to the podcast. I'm doing the thing. Take the plunge. Get on the phone with me. Let's talk. Let's talk about what your next onboarding group would be. Um, by the time you listen to this show, it might be March, could be April, who knows, whenever you listen. But we're opening the doors back up. We shouldn't close them again anytime soon unless, unless something crazy happens, but I don't foresee that happening. And let's make some serious changes. Let's not just say we're going to do it or it's not, now's not the right time. Let's have a real conversation and see if we can change your life from the inside and out. All right, everyone, enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Bomb Mom podcast. Today, we have Dr. John Neustadt on. Welcome to the show, Dr. John. Thank you. I am so excited to have you on because you have quite the resume. You're an author, you're a doctor, you're a researcher, you're an integrative medical expert. Like you are a perfect fit for our show. Well, I'm excited to share what I've learned and help your audience. I hope it gives practical information because there are so many tools out there available. Once people understand, you know, what's out there, they can really make a difference in their own health. Yeah. And we talk about this a lot on the podcast of how there's so many tools for people to live a healthy life and not just settle, not suffer. And I think the more experts we have like you on the show and talking about topics that are important that aren't, they're not sexy. They're not out there being talked about. Like we're going to dive into osteoporosis today. Never have we talked about that on the show today. And I'm sure people are like, what? Why do I have to worry about that? I'm not 90. When I'm 90, then I'll worry about breaking a bone. <laughs> but I have a feeling you're going to like, just shoot me down and tell me we're totally wrong on that. I'm not going to shoot you down. I'm, I'm going to elevate the conversation for everyone because Perfect. I think what's really important to understand is that a bone mass peaks when we are in our twenties and typically osteoporosis affects women. 80% of cases are, are in women. And then after the twenties, you know, it starts to go downhill. People already start to lose bone, bone density. If you wait until your 60s to really start being concerned about this, which is typically when people start thinking about it, when they go through menopause, it's not too late, but you've really missed a long period of time and opportunities to 
make sure you're maintaining your bone strength, mm -hmm. make, make sure you're maintaining your bone health. And the information that I provide, the research in my book, actually, when people implement those integrative strategies, it's not just helping their bones, it's helping everything else in their life as well, mentally, physically, mm -hmm. emotionally, all of that can be tied back to, to bone health. But just real quickly, I think one of the biggest concerns that I have especially in women in their 20s and 30s and 40s, are the biggest causes of hidden destroyers of bones, and that's medications. Really? So many women are taking antidepressants and the yeah. selective serotonin reuptake re inhibitors and the selective serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. People know them by names like you know, mm -hmm. Balta, Prozac, mm -hmm. th those types of medications for depression. Zola, like Zola, right? So many wreak havoc on bone health. This is not new information. It's been known for many years, but most clinicians aren't aware of it. There have been multiple studies that have been done. Also, what's called meta analysis, which is a study of studies. They've looked at all the previous studies that have been done and they pooled all the data. And what they found is shocking that like other medications that, that damage bone, the longer somebody's on it, the greater the risk. And now we understand that for every 19 people taking an SSRI, we will expect there to be one fracture. Another study found for every 49 people, you know, there'll be one fracture. So part of it depends on how long you're taking it. The longer somebody takes it, the greater the risk. But also we know that even people taking it for as little as a year have an increased risk for fractures. Why? The What's other the major, science? Major... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off there. I'm just, I'm blown no, away not by a this. Problem. No, we, we've talked yeah, about antidepressants a lot. Like, yes, it's fascinating. No one's brought this up before. My doctors never spoke to me about this before. Or like, you know, when I have clients and like, my doctor just wants me to start taking this, but there's a risk for bone fracture. You know, like no one's saying this. Because they didn't understand it. A study was conducted actually where they looked at hospitalized patients who were in the hospital because of a fracture. And they looked at the medications they were taking in the months prior to the fracture and the medications that they were prescribed after the fracture. And what they discovered was shocking. They, the doctors took them off the most commonly understood medications like prednisone is very commonly known to damage bone and increase fracture risk. So some patients were switched off of those, but what happened is they put patients on other medications like the antidepressants. And so overall, there was no net benefit. The same number of patients who went in with medications who broke a bone because they were taking medications that increased fracture risk but by either increasing the risk for falling, reducing bone density, they were actually not helped overall. The same number of patients were on bone destroying and fracture risk increasing medications after the hospital too. So it's something that doctors don't know about by and large, and people really do need to educate themselves, which is why in my book, there's an entire chapter just dedicated to, to medication induced osteoporosis. Yeah. And we have to say the name of it because everyone's definitely going to want to read this. It's Fracture Proof Your Bones, a Comprehensive Guide to Osteoporosis. What's the science behind it? Why, what does it, you know, the, and I'm sure this could be like a two hour lecture just on this, but why the antidepressant, why does that have an effect on the bone and the mass and breaking it down basically know, it's, it's it's what's it's it's difficult to understand i mean how does <laughs> serotonin which most people that you know relate to mood in the brain how does that affect the bones yeah well, the reality is that most of the serotonin in the body is not produced in the brain it's produced in the intestines and uh, it's about 80 to 90 percent of the serotonin is produced by cells in the intestines because serotonin and has more actions than just, you know, for enhancing mood. Well, and some of those actions are, are helping to regulate bone metabolism and the cells that are in bone. And what happens is when serotonin is artificially increased by the medications, that serotonin stops or slows down cells in the bone called osteoblasts. Those cells form new healthy bone and that allows osteoclasts, which are, is another important cell in bone mm -hmm. that breaks old bone down. It 
increases their activity relative to the osteoblast. So you get more bone breaking down. In a healthy body, in a healthy bone, we have a, a good balance of both the osteoblast activity and the osteoclast activity because old worn out bone is always being recycled. It's being broken down by the osteoclasts and new healthy bone is being laid down and produced by osteoblasts. And when you have a medication or when you're starting to get bone loss from any source, any mm -hmm. reason, you know, that healthy balance, that dynamic and equilibrium is off. And our goal as clinicians, our goal, anyone's goal, if they're trying to promote their own bone health and maintain bone strength is to reestablish that balance because you can grow back bone strength. You can improve bone density with integrative approaches. It's, it's been shown time and again in clinical trials. Well, bone, it, it's just miraculous. It's so fascinating how it works. And I mean, now we can like lengthen it and fix it. It, it. it just bone in general fascinates me and how flexible it is. And my daughter broke her thumb and I was like, just amazed at how quick it healed. And <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God, bone's amazing. We need to learn more about it. <laughs> so just to kind of add to a female who is already depressed, already not feeling good, her health and her nutrition probably isn't on point, you know, now we have to add another thing to the list of concern of like long-term damage done to your bone. But I think before when we, women hear this, they're going to think a little bit more before just taking that pill, maybe taking a different alternative approach. What are some like integrative approaches that could help, you know, strengthen bone and help prevent fracture or even prevent women having to get on the medication in the first place? Fantastic question. So in terms of bone health, it's very clear the approaches that promote stronger bones and then imp improve uh, bone health in, in general. And it's really looking at it holistically is giving and creating the environment that bone need to function and flourish. So bone and our bodies are biochemical, right? It mm -hmm. works off biochemical pathways and our biochemistry is primed and wants to do the best job it can do. So if we create the environment and provide the nutrition and other things that affect the environment, then bone will do a better job at staying strong and healthy. So what are some of those things? So diet is crucially important. That's probably, that's not news to anybody, but what kind of diet? So the research has shown that the Mediterranean dietary pattern is associated with a 21% reduction in fracture risk, which is an amazing statistic if you think about it, because we all have to eat. So with every spoonful, you're either promoting your health and improving your health, or you're feeding the disease. So why not make healthy choices to create healthier habits? For a lot of people transitioning into the Mediterranean diet, which is primarily a plant forward diet, it's the opposite essentially of the standard American diet. Lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, mm -hmm. lean proteins, low in processed foods. And to eat that way, you know, maybe take time. It's about long-term, not a yeah. quick fix and creating habits for long-term health in your life. The other thing that's really important is sleep. And we do know that if people are getting less than five hours of sleep at night, that's associated with about a 30% uh, reduction in uh, bone density, 20 to 30%. And wow. that's chronically, it's not just one night or two nights, but so many people struggle with healthy mm -hmm. sleep, especially parents. And so anything you can do, and there are always some things that, you know, aren't out of your control, but anything that you can control and do to help promote your sleep. And I go through in the book and describe different strategies and things people can do to help their sleep. That's really important. One thing that is also important as people know is exercise and people to love to be you know active, but too many people feel like I think they need to be active in a certain way. They have to go to the gym and, and pump iron, or they mm -hmm. have to do yoga, or they have to do Pilates. The research just doesn't support that. 95% of fractures occur because somebody falls. So anything we can do to prevent a fall will necessarily prevent fall-related injuries, including fractures. So mm -hmm. if even just walking, Research has shown, and it doesn't have to be 10,000 steps a day. That's a myth. If you walk 7,000 to 7,500 steps a day, 
on average, that's associated with a 50 to 70% decrease in all cause mortality. What does that mean? It means dying from anything, including dying from a fracture. Yeah. So that's just, and if you, if you have osteoporosis and you break a hip, there's up to a 36% chance you're going to be dead in a year. So that if you is break really your hip? To prevent. Yeah. The research shows for women with osteoporosis who are 65 years or older, who break a hip, there's a 36% chance that they're going to be dead within a year. Over half of those who survive never regain their pre-fracture level of pain-free life and mobility. Oh. 20% of them need nursing care. Mm -hmm. And the, it just wreaks havoc on people's finances, their family, their social life. It is a horrible, horrible way to go. So mm -hmm. anything you can do to prevent it is important. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. And I am so honored to be able to talk about this product and recommend it to you all on my podcast because it's literally a product that has changed my life. I have had some recent travel. I took those travel packets with me and I did not miss a day. And everyone's asking, okay, so what is this stuff? That's the number one question I get. And is it disgusting? Does it taste really gross because it looks green? Yes, it is green. No, it doesn't taste disgusting. With one scoop of Athletic Greens, all you do is pour it into water. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients, oh, it supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all the things. AG1 contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It helps support better sleep quality and recovery and supports mental clarity and alertness. Take it first thing in the morning, shake it up, down it because it's gonna coat your stomach. It's setting you up for optimal absorption. So when you do eat the right foods and you put the right thing into your body, you can actually absorb it. And right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially with it being cold and flu season. And can I just add, I haven't been sick once. Knock on wood, not once. It's just one scoop of cup and water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash bomb mom. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash bomb mom to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Well, and everyone always laughs, like, don't fall and break a hip, you know, but it's true. You don't want to fall and you don't want grandma to fall or anyone to fall and break a hip because it's true. Those stats yeah. are scary. So supplements can also help. There've been some great studies on dietary supplements. And this is where I like to educate people on, you know, what are the best questions to ask? Because that will open up, you know, better understanding and for people to continue to learn. So when it comes to osteoporosis, the most important question is what I'm being recommended. Has that been shown to reduce fractures in clinical trials, not just improve bone density. Most doctors make the mistake of focusing almost exclusively on bone density, which is a number on a test, but clinically the most dangerous thing with osteoporosis is breaking a bone. I already mm -hmm. talked about hip fractures. So the question is, well, okay, we're running this test. How well does a bone density test predict fractures? People are shocked to learn that since the 1990s, we've known that it predicts less than half of, of women with osteoporosis who will ac actually break a bone. In fact, a bone density test only predicts 44% of women with osteoporosis who will break a bone and only 21% of men. Wow. All organizations that have public position statements have correctly concluded that fracture risk depends on factors largely other than bone density. So a lot of people, and this was a mistake that I made early on in my career, you know, I was treating bone density and I thought I was doing a great job. My mother-in-law has osteoporosis. Her physician was treating her and her bone density was going up. So she was happy and he was happy. And I mean, I was happy. Sure. And then she fell and broke her hip. Oh, and then I, and I thought, what is going on here? And so I started looking, really diving into the research and, you know, 15, 18 years later, 
you know, out comes my book and, and I'm lecturing around the country at a medical conference, really passionately trying to educate clinicians that they need to do a better job just because they think they're protecting patients. And just because patients think they're protected doesn't mean they are. And it's a dangerous situation that has been being inadequately addressed and inadequately treated for many different reasons. But focusing on a bone density test is re alone it's an important piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. but by no means the most important piece. Focusing exclusively on bone density is dangerous. You've got to ask the question, you're recommending this to me, has it been shown in clinical trials to reduce fractures? If you look at the, the medications, for example, there is only one medication on the market now, FDA approved, that has been shown to reduce both vertebral and non-vertebral fractures, meaning hip mm -hmm. fractures, the most dangerous type, in people who have never had a previous osteoporosis fracture. So there are two categories when you're looking at medications. It's, are we trying to prevent a fracture from occurring the first time, or are we trying to prevent subsequent fractures from occurring? Mm -hmm. And the medications are different effectiveness in those different patients. So most people are recommended Fosamax or Prolia and the oral bisphosphonates, like the Fosamax, for example, mm -hmm. don't prevent both a vertebral and non-vertebral fracture if you've never had one before. Only Zometa, the infusion has been shown to do that. If you've had a previous fracture, there are many more medications that are, that are effective. So that's an important question to ask. When it comes to dietary supplements, there are only four nutrients that have been shown in clinical trials and in cohort studies to reduce fractures in those studies. They are calcium and vitamin D, a specific form of vitamin K2 called MK4 and strontium. Calcium and vitamin D have been shown to reduce fractures by about 20%. It's important to test your vitamin D levels because there's an optimal level of blood vitamin D that's been shown to reduce fractures. And that's a number between 30 and 44. It's in, in my book, so you don't have to re remember okay. it. For the immune boosting benefits though of vitamin D, you really want your number higher, you know, 50, 60 okay. uh, uh, with the vitamin I D. I just had mine tested, so I'm gonna have to look what my number was. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. With strontium, I don't like strontium for the following reasons. First of all, it incorporates into bone and is a mineral. And so because the test for bone density is an x-ray test, the x-ray goes into the bone, it bounces off the minerals. Mm -hmm. And then the machine picks that up and detects it and does its mathematical wizardry and spits out a, a, a number of the bone density test numbers. But because strontium is heavier than calcium, those x-rays bounce off the minerals at a different angle. So the test results that you get are false. They're not accurate. So yes, it's been shown to increase bone density, but in the US, where we don't correct for people taking strontium, the bone density test results are inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Most importantly though, strontium has been shown to reduce fractures and that's good. Yeah. Mostly all but one study has shown only vertebral fracture reduction, not hip fracture reduction. Only one study has shown hip fracture reduction. But even more importantly than all of that, a review of the safety data that came out of Europe recently has shown that strontium can increase the risk for dangerous blood clots that cause pulmonary embolism, that is clot where you can't yeah. breathe and people can die, and stroke. For every one patient that uses strontium, the type of strontium that's actually approved as a medicine in Europe, for, it's the only safety data and efficacy data we have. For every one patient who's helped, they expect one dangerous blood clot to form. So I'm not a fan of strontium for all of those reasons. Yeah. Vitamin K2, however, I am in love with vitamin K2 because it's safe. It has been researched for over 30 years. There are different forms of vitamin K2 in dietary supplements for bone support. MK7 and MK4. MK7 is what people will see most frequently because it's very inexpensive. It's cheap to manufacture. And the question is though, which form of vitamin K2 has been shown in clinical trials to maintain bone strength as indicated by, again, the most important thing, reducing fractures. Mm -hmm. MK7 has never been shown to reduce fractures in any clinical trial. 
both MK4 and MK7 promote healthy bone density and support that. But MK4 is the only form of the nutrient of the vitamin K2, and they're different. You change one atom or one group, molecule or nutrient, and its activity can change. Yeah, everything. There are activities of MK4 that don't exist in MK7. Now, MK4, there are over 28 clinical trials, five of them specifically, or seven of them specifically have looked at fractures as the endpoint that was studied in the clinical trials. It's been shown repeatedly to promote healthy bone density, but also maintain strong bones as indicated by more than 70% reduction in fractures in clinical trials in the dose of 45 milligrams per day. 70%? Yes. Yes. And all that research is on my website. People can look at it. But when I was working with patients and I had this, you know, really this revelation of something's not right here with my mother-in-law, and I started digging into the research and I discovered the research on MK4, there was no product on the market. It didn't exist and still doesn't exist in the clinical dose combined with calcium and vitamin D to help my patients. That's why I started my dietary supplement company, MBI. That's why I created, you know, all the way back in 2007, it came on the market, OsteoK and then OsteoK minis with the clinical doses of the MK4 and calcium and vitamin D. In fact, I'm so convinced by this research that we have a guarantee that it won't only maintain or improve or promote healthy bone density, but if somebody actually breaks a bone while taking our products, we will refund all their money for all those, all qualifying purchases oh based gosh. on that guarantee. What's the name of your supplement company? MBI, did you say? NBI, it stands for Nutritional Biochemistry Incorporated. It's nbihealth.com. That's something we have to make sure we get the link from you for that to put into the show notes because mm -hmm. people are going to hear this and they're going to be like, well, where can I get it? You know, and they'll go search their local vitamin shop or, you know, GNC and it, they'll come across something that's junk and they can't be trusted. And that was one of my questions too. Like, how can we evaluate, you know, our dietary supplements to know if we're even getting what it says? Is there any certain thing? I love this question. Yeah. Thank you so much for <laughs> asking that. And one reason I love it and I'm like so excited about it, I'm actually giving the keynote address in a medical school later this month and just what a week or two on this exact topic. How can clinicians, how can they evaluate, how can medical students understand how to evaluate dietary supplements? Because it is an important thing. And there's a lot of research out there that one, companies will cite and won't actually have the dose or the form of the nutrient in their product. So one thing to look for when, when people, when, when you're reading blogs and, and their, their claims out there, they're saying their product does this, look for the research citation. Okay, that's one indication that it may be legitimate. Not the best because I've seen many times, specifically with different nutrients, different categories of nutrients commonly, the study will be cited. But then when I look at the formula, they either use a different form of the nutrient that hasn't been shown to work. Like they'll cite a study that used MK4, but their product has MK7. or they will recommend a product that is giving you the amount of the nutrient that was actually lower than what was used in the study and shown to work. Sambucol or the black was a Sambucol as a product, but they use berry extract mm -hmm. and the clinical trials actually used, I think it's three times higher doses than what's recommended on the bottle to take. And yet they cite that, that research. That's sneaky, right? That's some sneaky. It's incredibly sneaky. <laughs> incredibly like, oh, sneaky. look at the so, study so that, and, and it doesn't even match up. Right. And so the other thing too, is really ask the question, you know, is this, are they talking about the most important thing? So again, with, is it just bone density, right. promoting healthy bone density? Or are they also showing that it maintains strong bones with respect then to the company itself? I always look at how open they are about their manufacturing processes. So on our website, you'll see uh, information about our manufacturing facility, what we use, the third-party certifications that, that we maintain, and then every raw material for us, when it comes into the warehouse, first of all, is quarantined. 
and it goes through analytical testing to make sure that what we've ordered, the raw material that's been ordered mm -hmm. is what we receive. So for identity, and then it's tested for any, for contaminants, mold, bacteria, uh, toxic metals. Then once it gets cleared, it's gets quarant still in quarantine, right? Doesn't get near anything else. Then in the manufacturing process, after the manufacturing process, before any lot, any batch is released to the public, all of those bottles are put in storage and we send the finished product out to the lab. The finished product goes to the lab where it is tested for label claims to make sure that what's in the bottle is what's on the label is in the capsules or in the bottle in terms of the dose and the identity to verify again that it is the nutrient and it is in the dose. Then we also test for contaminants a second time to make sure nothing got in during the manufacturing process, bacteria, yeast, spores, mold, and toxic metals again. And so the result of that testing of the finished product is a certificate of analysis. And every company should have a certificate of analysis on every batch that they manufacture. You can ask to see those certificates of analysis. If they're not willing to share that with you, for me personally, I think that would be a big question mark in my head. What might they be? Is that available usually on a website? No, it's typically not available on a website. Okay. But if people ask my company for a certificate of analysis, happy to send yeah. it to them. So that's something we could email the company and be like, hey, do you have this? Can you send me a copy yep. of it? And they should be able to respond and provide that. And make sure you ask specifically, send me a copy of the current certificate of analysis for the lot. So each one is called a lot or batch, mm -hmm. each manufacturing run, and each lot or batch is given or assigned a number. So the certificate analysis for the current lot that you're shipping. Interesting. So what you're going to receive in the mail is matches their certificate of analysis, the lot number on the certificate of, the, of analysis. So that's one way to know. The other thing is just to look for citations on the website. So many times I get people asking me, why isn't there magnesium in your product? You have to have magnesium and calcium together in a certain ratio for it to work. And for 20 years, I've been asking people, please, can you send me the study that shows that I have scoured databases looking for that data. It doesn't, I read it on a website. Well, could you, could you go back or tell me the website? Was there a citation? Zero. Yeah. You won't find one because it's not true. The clinical trials that you, that got the extraordinary bone strength with the MK4 didn't use magnesium or boron or phytoestrogens or any of the other ingredients that I call kitchen soup ingredients. They just put them uh -huh. in their, their formulas because people think they're great, but they're in, they're, they've never been shown to reduce fractures. So the amount that's in there really is important, but also important to make sure that the type of nutrient has been shown to work. So magnesium and calcium, you don't need it. It was never used in the clinical trials with the MK4, just calcium and vitamin D. I believe a dietary supplement like a, a multivitamin, like my supreme multivitamin that I formulated for my patients is important to take for many people. But when we're talking about bone health or anything, mm -hmm. mood, no matter what it is, my philosophy and my belief is we're talking about a very targeted approach. So let's use what's been shown in clinical trials to work because people deserve that. My patients deserve that that my family deserve that I deserve that and you deserve mm -hmm. that. And that's the underlying approach of philosophy for which we do. They started the company in which we approach every project. It's integrity. You guys have high integrity and that's the company that like, I want to recommend to my clients. That's the type of company I want my listeners to be like, I heard this podcast and now I'm getting his, his supplements too. And I read his book and it all makes sense. And it's all cited and backed, you know, by actual research. Like I love it. I absolutely love it. I have to bring up though, not once, Dr. Neustadt, have you told us to drink milk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not once have great. you said yeah. in your listing of, of yeah. what to do to prevent fractures, have you brought up milk? And I find that very interesting. And I'm totally being like sarcastic right now, <laughs> but I'm sure there's people listening that are like, oh, he's probably just going to say to drink milk and, you know, it does the body good and it builds strong bones. And that's what we were told growing up as kids. You have to drink your milk so you have strong bones. 
Great is marketing, that not right? true? Have we been lied to? So it's not true, but also you don't need cal- you don't need dairy to build strong bones. What you need is you do need calcium, but you need a healthy mix of other dietary components as well. The reason why I'm not a fan of dairy, not only because its effectiveness in this area it is not great, but because there are many contaminants within dairy products, even organic dairy products that I don't think people should be consuming regularly. One of them importantly for women are estrogens. So when you're consuming dairy, whether it's cheese or milk, you are actually consuming the milk from a cow. And in breast milk, as we know, are hormones and there are estrogens in those hormones, in, in that, in those products. So you're basically giving yourself, you know, outside estrogen supplementation, not a fan of that. The second reason is why there've been studies and there's a blog on this about on dairy. If you just search on my website on, I think it's, you know, time to rethink your, your dairy, or I think it's maybe it's what's in your milk, I believe is the title of it. Bacteria have been found in those products, other chemicals, fertilizers found in those products, even organic products have contaminant, have been shown to have some contaminants in it. Now there's another blog, top non-dairy calcium sources that has some excellent suggestions on calcium where you'll also be getting other healthy nutrients as well. That's very interesting. I'm not a fan of dairy and I feel like my entire life and my gut and my skin has really changed since I have removed all of that. Not all of it, I love ice cream. Not gonna lie, I have ice cream sometimes. Who doesn't? But <laughs> right, I mean, a treat is great. Yeah, I have no problem with that. Yeah, but as a part of like my main nutrition and source, or like I'm giving my kids milk every single day. Like, absolutely not. My kids have actually never even had cow's milk before, besides than like an ice cream. They've never like had a glass of milk right. or had it with their cereal or something. But now the reality for adults, though, is that improving how much calcium they're getting is important for most people. The average American woman gets about 800 milligrams of calcium per day. The U.S. recommended daily allowance for calcium for adult adults is 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams per day. And that's from all sources, diet and dietary supplements. And I think that's something that's lost on a lot of people too, is you know what role should a dietary supplement play in their life? Mm-hmm. Well, I believe a dietary supplement should be used as intended by the FDA in the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, the law that created the regulations around dietary supplements. And as the name implies dietary supplement, it should be a supplement to a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. Diet should be first. I talked about the Mediterranean dietary pattern. It's the most studied dietary pattern in the world. It's been shown repeatedly without any negative studies for 60, 70 years to reduce obesity, cancer risk, death from cancer, all cause mortality, diabetes, on in dementia, osteoporosis, fractures, on and on and on. It is the healthiest dietary pattern in the world. A dietary supplement though, if you're not getting enough of the nutrients should be there to supplement. Mm-hmm. That's why which is why I created two versions of OsteoK, one that has a higher amount, a thousand milligrams of calcium per day, OsteoK, and a lower amount of calcium, 400 milligrams of calcium per day called OsteoK minis to help people tailor because it's not a one size fits all. It depends on their needs, their diet, what what your doctor has recommended, that sort of. But what we do know is that the U.S. Institutes of Medicine, their position on calcium intake is bone, is that there is no increased benefit to bone health for taking more than 1,200 milligrams per day. So most people don't need 1,000 milligrams, 1,200 milligrams Mm -hmm. per day as a dietary supplement. In fact, if you're taking 1,200 or 1,500 milligrams of calcium as a dietary supplement, and you're eating like the average American, which frankly, I hope you're eating better, you know, you get that additional 800, you're up to 2,000, 2,300 milligrams of calcium per day, which the National Academies of Medicine says is dangerous. Oh, wow. The tolerable upper limit for calcium is about 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams per day from all sources. So you really don't want to be exceeding that. And that is also the position of the American Academy for Preventative uh, Cardiology 
and the Bone Health and Osteoporosis Foundation. That's their position statements that up to a thousand milligrams per day is considered safe as a supplement, but you don't want to exceed the 2000 to 2500 milligrams a day from all sources. Interesting. It's well, it just goes to show that like more isn't better. You know, it's not something you have to keep pumping and like, oh, I'm going to go for 5,000. Like no, and no, no proof. No. And in fact, a quick anecdote, uh, one of my early patients had adult onset asthma and I looked at his supplements. I did a bunch of the dysfunctional testing on him, looking at the nutrients and the pathways that those affect and discovered that he had actually induced his own asthma because he heard that zinc was good for prostate. And he, he assumed that a little bit of zinc was good. A lot must be even better. So he was mega dosing on zinc, but zinc, if it's not balanced with copper, if there's not copper also, zinc can deplete your copper. So he created a copper deficiency. Copper is required for epinephrine production. Epinephrine is required to help open up your lungs so you can breathe. And he could see in the testing that his copper was low and the analytes or the variables that looked at that pathway, getting down to the markers for epinephrine and norepinephrine were low and the copper was low and the zinc was high. So I threw his zinc in the trash. I gave him copper and days later, his asthma went away. We wrote, co-wrote some books together. It's the stories are in there, but that's a case. You, you yeah. know, just because a little bit's good for you doesn't mean a lot is also good. Right. Wow. And had you not done that testing, I mean, imagine if he was working with someone else, they probably just would have been what more inhalers, more steroids, like. So he was recommended a prednisone and he started taking it and had a lot of the side effects, which is you know, jitteriness, insomnia, oh. irritability, all had he been on it long-term again, it would have increased his risk for fractures and, and dying early. And so he came in to see me. Oh, well, I'm so glad he did. We are out of time already, which I can't even believe, but I would love to have you come back on and dive into like fixing our sleep naturally, going into like depression, improving mood with like functional medicine, like topics that I would love to chat with you that we didn't even get to cover today. And I know people can get a lot of insight on your book. So you guys have to get the book, Fracture Proof Your Bones. Quick, quick question. When we're talking about nutrition and like, you know, having a good diet, what are like the top foods that you would recommend that we should probably consume daily that's got the best calcium in it or the highest number, I should say. So spinach has great calcium in it, but you want to cook it because it increases the absorption when it's cooked. Oh, Sardines are an amazing source of calcium, Ew. actually one of the top sources of calcium. Really? I love sardines. Oh, gross. Not everybody's cup of tea, but uh, I love sardines. Okay. Sardines are good. So almonds also have a good amount of calcium. Broccoli has a good amount of calcium. I get that list is on my, my website yeah. for people to look at. And there are tons of free resources on my website. There's other, you know, there are special reports that people can download for free. There are tons of blogs. There's podcasts that I do in my, with my podcast. Uh -huh. So oh, lots perfect. of stuff. Perfect. Oh, we will definitely be sending people to your website. We'll put everything in the show notes. And this has just been amazing. Very eye opening with a lot of things. And this is the stuff that we have to talk about now. Like, I know we say it's not too late, but like, I'm going to say it before it's too late, <laughs> you know, like these are the things that we want to cover. We want to open your eyes to it, you know, because now, I mean, my daughter just came home the other day and she's like, mom, so-and-so has to take this medication now for her depression. And she got put on an antidepressant. She's 15, 15. It's very common. And I'm not opposed to using medications right. when they're indicated. They're good reasons too. But the general rule of thumb of medications, it should be for the smallest dose for the shortest duration. Yes. Unfortunately, most of the time people are prescribed a medication. They don't ask the question and doctors don't have a plan or offer the information. And the question is, how long am I going to be on this? How are you going to get me off of this? What are we going to do? So I don't need this. I didn't need it before. Why do I need it now? And am I going to need it for the rest of my life? Great questions that people are not asking. And they're just like, oh, no, this is what I have to be on. You know, so, well, I can't thank you enough for coming on. This has been incredible. And if you are willing, we would love to have you back and dive in even more. Yes. 
I would love it. Yes, <laughs> I would absolutely love it. It'd be fun. Yay. This is great. This is really fun. I'm for like, me. no pressure. This is my passion. I'm just, I'm just asking you right now for no, an no, answer. No, <laughs> I'm in. I'm awesome. All in. <laughs> awesome. Well, everyone, check the show notes. Go to his website. Check out the supplement company. Get his book. Fracture Proof Your Bones, a comprehensive guide to osteoporosis because it does matter. Thank you again for coming on, Dr. Dr. Neustadt. We really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, of course. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host, practice of the practice, or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.